I was sadly witness this morning to one of the most brutal feats of, I don't know if cuckery is the right word, it's not the right word, of passive aggressive kind of, um, that's also not quite right, certainly fuckery, undoubtedly fuckery, um, creepiness, very creepy, very, very creepy. So anyway, I'm in the coffee shop near my house, not one of not one of the corporate ones, uh, an independent one, much better coffee, generally higher class of normally, traditionally a higher class of individual in there, um, with me being the exception. Uh, they have a good range of snacks. They do avocado on toast. You get the vibe. Anyway, dude in front of me, okay, he goes in, flat white, please. Fine. That's what I order. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, the girl says, £2.70, please. He pulls out a fistful of change from his pocket, dumps it on the counter. There's about half a dozen plectrums, guitar plectrums, in with all of the change. And he just looks up and goes, sorry, guitarist. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, it was just... Uh, made me want to die. Actually made me want to die. I mean, I'm very glad I I had... I w I'm glad I witnessed it because it is nice to... Not nice. No, I think it's good, if not painful, to have the cold, stark savagery of reality presented to you like that occasionally. <sighs> Man, really just... <laughs> Sorry, guitarist. Just two words. Two words that tells you all you need to know about that gentleman. Not, not that he's a guitarist. He's probably not. Maybe he can play fucking uh, Land of the Rising Sun or whatever that one is. House of the Rising Sun. Maybe. Maybe he can play somebody that I used to know. Maybe he can play Wonderwall. Well, if you can play Wonderwall, you're Wonderwall. Yeah, uh, when man can uh, wonderful spielen, um, yeah, then man, yeah, er, I'm guitarist. I don't know, man. Listen, it was rough though. I didn't. I should have. I didn't. It wasn't. Didn't become immediately apparent that he had a thumb ring, but I'd say that it. It could have been on the other hand. Sorry, guitarist. Fuck, man. That was not how I wanted to start the day. Um, Stin saying ban people that listen to Oasis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily vote against that if it was um, to come up as a referendum. We should have more referendums. I like them. I think they're a lot of fun. Oh, Stin easily triggered with Oasis. Pfft, yeah, no, they, you know, Mancini and Indy can be, can be quite triggering for some people, particularly the Scotch. Let's take, let's take a referendum on loads of stuff. You know, let's. Let's no, let's fucking not, guys. Look, it's uh, Thursday, and that, well, I've been triggered by numerous things today. Firstly, by by the, I mean, can you imagine just like you you pull out your handful of change, and there's also like a load of tampons in there. And you just put it on the couch, and you go, "Sorry, feminist." Like, really? Yeah, I don't know. You pull out a wadge of change. And there's also like some pictures of kids. And just, sorry, paedophile. Sorry, Jeffrey Epstein. What? Like, it's it's a no. It's a, it's a no from me. I'm triggered already. The second triggering comes in the form of uh, Constrict, King of the Triggerers. He was on Trickstar Radio this morning from eight until nine. I said, Connor, how about you come on Coffee and Memes afterwards? He said, Ranking it would be a pleasure. Did he cut? Is he here now? Is he fuck? He's decided he'd, he'd rather go to work than to come on the show with the Feathery King, his god, his hero, his mentor, um, his style guru, his, um, his superior, you know? So, and it pains me to the fact that then after the show, I've got to play his show. I might ban him. I might not play him. I might play it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play a communist show afterwards just to spite him. Not even. I would not cut the nose off to spite the face in such a grotesque and visceral way. But guys, look, it's Thursday. Is it Thursday already? Fuck a duck. Okay, 
It's Thursday. It's the 7th of November. And by the power invested in me by the state, it's coffee and memes. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Slugger. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stretch and Star Fairy Coffee Memes. Um, uh, my name is Will, high ranking feathery king, and I am your servant. I am here to please. Um, whip it out, or wipe it first, and then it's time for business, if you know what I mean. Um, well, the tunes are up, so we might as well discuss them. Uh, a few bits, are we, we've already uh, we've played quite a lot of these. New Magnitude, that's certainly worth a go. Um, naughty bit of of, of high grade neuro funk, um, new magnitude. I guess I think that it's just not on RAM. I don't know if they had a falling out or whatever. Whether or not Andy came around, choked him out. I don't know how it works over over at RAM Records. Ask Mitten. Um, Submarine, no sleep. Was that a single? That's just one track on on that. That's a shame. Uh, there is this new Benny Page, which actually was a bit of fun. You know, uh, K9. K9. Canine, track called Depth off an album called EP or release or whatever called Depth. It's on Shogun. We'll get into that. All right, let's, let's get into that now. It's, it's a bit of fun. Fuck it, let's start with the jam. Switch things up. Fun day today on Threshold. It will be constrict as much as it pains me, incidental sonics after this. And then your boy Banage has compiled an hour's worth of shoe throwers from Coffee and Memes. I'll take it through until two. And then you can go for lunch. And there's Rankin's Records at three. Eastern Front, seven. Duff at nine. Particularly triggering article next. Tell by my expression. Oh, 
Yeah, man! It's K9. Uh, it's called Depth. It's on Shogun. That's a nice bit. Nice little, nice little stepper. Little wally stepper. A yep, bit of horny. A little bit of fog on. Lovely. Just a little tinge. A little delicate smattering of fog on. Just really just, just smearing it. Just taking... Imagine... Imagine the rest of the track is just a... Oh! A lovely bit of fresh Tesco tiger bread. Oh! 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 Choice. And the... Uh, you buttered it, or you buttered it with, um, I don't know, some some other sounds, some other bass, synth, just general one shots, this and that. Then you, you, you foghorn, which in this instance comes in the form of some some hummus. Some fo you get foghorn hummus, yeah? Everyone likes hummus, don't they? Apart from Cy Twitty, it's like, oh, I thought, is that that foreign muck? Yeah, yes, Twitty, it's the foreign muck. And uh, this is the hummus that doesn't have... E. coli in it, like an enormous amount of hummus, apparently, that's being recalled. So, watch out, hummus lovers out there. I know a lot of the people who listen to the show are big, big into hummus. Um, the joke here, really, is that I'm just pronouncing um, hummus as hummus, really, and just seeing how many, if I can say it enough times, it becomes funny. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever listened to Rankin Radio, but that's pretty much how all the jokes work. <laughs> um... Anyway, yeah, and you take your tiger bread, your big, lovely, fresh, delicious slice of Tesco's tiger bread, buttered it, and just, ah, oh, just smear it in the fog on hummus. Oh, oh lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, Emma Watson's not single. She's self-partnered. Wow. And as has been discussed in the, uh, um... <clears throat> In the Discord, she's adopted the hair of uh, an 80s footballer. Possibly, um, uh, what's his what's his name? The northern a uh, northern 80s footballer whose name escapes me. Ah, oh, will you come on, Peter Beardsley? <laughs> um, actually, the picture there isn't the, the picture of, of her looking like Beardsley. <laughs> it's not in there, but you know, whatever, man. Let's just get into the triggering, shall we? Um, this is. Th I mean, this is this is the sort of news that I, I really was born to report on. Um, Emma Watson is not single; she's self-partnered. Emma Kelly of the Metro writes this and gets 160 shares off the back of it. It's pretty common uh, to worry about being single when turning 30, but Emma Watson is looking at singledom in a whole new light. Um, the 29-year-old has decided to give her relationship status a rebrand, saying that she is self-partnered rather than single. Is that a, is that just um what's that like the female version of an incel, I guess, um, consciously uncoupling masterminded, ma consciously uncoupling mastermind Gwyneth Paltrow would be proud. She's bonkers. Uh, the Harry Potter actress isn't in a relationship coming up to her thirtieth birthday in April twenty twenty, and resents the anxiety that is heaped on people reaching the age reaching the milestone age. Wow, so bold, so brave, so beautiful. Speaking to Vogue, Emma said, I was like, why does everyone make such a big fuss about turning 30? It's not a big deal. Cut to 29. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so stressed and anxious. And I realise it's because of suddenly this bloody influx of subliminal messaging around. What's subliminal? What are you on about? If you've not built a home, if you do not have a husband, if you've not had a baby, if you are turning 30 and you are not in some incredibly secure, stable place in your career or you're still figuring things out, it's just an incredible amount of anxiety. Fuck off, millionaire actress, which will never have to work again due to residuals from Harry Potter. Fuck you. Seriously, like, yeah, oh, poor you. Poor fucking Hermione. Poor Hermione Granger ain't got a hubby. Oh, she best he'll just have to cuddle her millions in bed every night. Boo-hoo. Not in a stable place in your career. You can get can get more stable. It's the fucking Harry Potter franchise. You will never have to work again if you don't want to. What a load of shit. Um, while it's quite comforting to know that a multi-millionaire, world-famous actress and activist is worried about this stuff too, is it? It's fucking insulting. It's patronising to the point of buggery. 
Emma, aka Hermione Granger, is now happy being alone. No, she's not. She's lying. She's not. No one is happy being alone unless you're unless there's something wrong with you, and then you shouldn't be with anyone. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy for it. And then just really, I'm actually just really comfortable, like on my own and stuff. No, you're not. You cry yourself to sleep and wipe your tears for fifty pound notes. Come on. Uh, the little woman star said. I never, um, I never believed the whole I'm happy single spiel. I was like, it's totally spiel. Um, it took me a long time, but I'm very happy being single. I call it being self-partnered. Righto. Yeah, no, here she, here she, what? This is opinion. Hold on. No, here she is with the, the hair. Right, yeah. What's the deal with the hairdo? Yeah. I mean, you know, is that what the show has become? I'm now critiquing female celebrities hairdos but that, i mean that is there's a lot of the beardsley in that i mean a lot um <laughs> people googling peter beardsley's wife presumably just because of atletico mints right little little bit longer at the sides yeah there you go little bit longer at the sides and i think you've uh you've got it where are we yeah come on just trim it off a little bit at the sides there, Emma. And you've got yourself an absolute stonking barnet. Lovely, lovely chicken wrap. Lovely, lovely chicken. Oh, sorry, love. Um, great. Uh, China's richest man, Jack Ma, wants to fight Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Fuck it, I'll fly, fight Floyd Mayweather. The amount of money you get for fighting Floyd Way... Flo, flo, I can't even say it. Floyd Money Mayweather. Fighting Floyd Money Mayweather. That's red panty night. You get to fight Floyd Money Mayweather. Damn. I mean, he's already the richest man in China. He don't need the money. Why do you want to fight Floyd Money Mayweather? Why not... Why not... Why not fight Molly May? Not Floyd Money Mayweather. Fight Molly May off Love Island or Millie Bobby, Mar Millie Bobby Brown. Fight one of them. Not Floyd Money Mayweather. That sounds like a boring story. I don't know. Why. A day, a rarely a day goes by when someone doesn't take to social media to call out a celeb they don't like in some kind of bizarre post. And today is no different, with China's richest man Jack Ma asking for a pop at former boxing world champion Floyd Money Mayweather. Money, money, mini Bobby, Billy Bobby Brown. In a video posted to Twitter by boxing legend and Mayweather rival Manny Pacquiao, uh, the founder of tech firm Alibaba. Uh, can be seen hitting the pads, clearly in preparation for a potential bout. Um, here he goes. Bosh, bosh, bosh! Wow, look at that, techers. Incredible techers. Wow. Floyd Mayweather, if you want a real fight, fight me. If you want an exhibition, my guy, my friend, Jack Ma will take care of you. The real money team. Yeah, I'm ready. Anytime, any place, and then his team's ready. Yes, that's right. Um, for the richest man in China, he doesn't half look like he came from the Make a Wish Foundation. Do you know what I mean? He does look like a some kid, poor kid whose dying wish was to go and train with Manny Pacquiao. Like, <laughs> you know, for a man who I presume is a multi billionaire, um, does look a little bit like, yeah, he's on his way out. Bless him. <laughs> I mean, he looks about 12. Like, what's the deal? <laughs> okay, buddy. Um, oh, well, bit of fun, isn't it? Oh, he started Alibaba. Wow, okay. The video posted on uh, Mayweather's, uh, Manny Pacquiao's Twitter. The founder of the tech firm Alibaba. Alibaba. Uh, can we see him hitting the pads? Clearly in preparation for a potential bout. Not clearly in preparation for a potential bout. He can't. Throw a punch. Well, I mean, th there's some basic arm movement, but like, there's zero. T even me, as an absolute fucking novice, can see that that those are not the blows of a trained fighter. Yeah, Logan Paul would knock him into next week. Yeah, KSI with one hand tied behind his back would knock him about. That video of KSI knocking a man down in the ring. Um, is hilarious if you want to see it um, because again like Helen Keller could see that the person he is fighting is an outrageous ringer and has I mean it's just literally like you just put someone just put gloves on a fat guy stick him in the ring and have someone with you know some training 
go at them. And you see, like, the way he's defending, he's kind of going like that. Ah! That's how a novice defends. Like, a, a trained fighter does not go, ah! A trained fighter goes like that. Ah! And then gets knocked down. It's hilarious. Like, they're releasing it to try and make it look like he's good. I guess they're high, trying to hype the fight, but it's embarrassing. It's very funny to see what Big Chizzy, um, the champ, is doing on... Uh, he's 4,000 years old on Instagram. If anyone doesn't follow Shannon Briggs, uh, you should. Because, you know, it's the champ. It's just champ stuff. It's champ. Um, taking a break from the workout, Manny turns to the camera and says, blah, 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 we've seen all of this. So what's the deal? I mean, they're just having a laugh, aren't they? I mean, it's not really... He look, my man here, richest man in China. He looks a bit like if you take a photograph and you chop out some of it and then you slide, like they slide the bottom up a bit. Like they would do that on shooting stars with pictures of celebrities uh, to huge comedic effect. That's just what his face looks like normally. Well, God bless him. Um, maybe he could go out with Emma Watson. You know, they both, you know, they could bond over their millions and billions of dollars. Uh, let's have another jam. Where are we? Where are the jams? Here are the jams. Um, let's have this magnitude bit then. It's called Mantis. It's on a record label called Evolution Chamber. Oh. Evolution Chamber. Yeah, this is a serious bit of gear. Magnitude doing work. Hugh in the chat. So you on for your first instalment of your new show tonight at nine? Am I right? Six minutes long as well on this magnitude uh, track. Old school. <laughs> Thank you. 
Atlantis. Well, that's Mantis by Magnitude. It's doing the business, isn't it? I mean, I don't know what is going to come up against that for Shoe Thrower of the Week. It's kind of got to be a dead set, really, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, guys, bloody hell, that's a real romper stomper. Um, fine by me. Absolutely fine. No red pen. No see me. Just a little smiley face. Guys, Dad wants to immortalise his sperm by turning it into a vasectomy ring. <sighs> Again, I, I just, when I see these things, I'm just, I'm always met with the meme of uh, the black guy reading the magazine. Uh, the magazine is called White People, and he just looks <laughs> truly appalled. <laughs> it's just like... Oh, God, a man is on the hunt for a jeweler to help him with a rather, rather unusual request involving his sperm, which he hopes to transform into a Christmas present. Hmm. Do you know someone that could help make a vasectomy ring? Um, this is the question one British dad is asking, and it is just as bizarre as it sounds. The unknown man, uh, who has five kids... Okay, probably is vasectomy time, isn't it? Uh, is preparing to have a vasectomy at the end of November, but hopes to immortalise his live sperm uh, before then in a piece of jewellery. And this ring uh, will be then given as an amusing Christmas gift to his wife, uh, if he can get one made in time. Okay, all right, I'm slightly more behind the idea if it's as a gift to wind up your wife. Okay, that, I mean, I'm, I could get behind a lot of ideas if the reason for it is to wind up a wife. Um, the London-based dad uh, says he and his wife are already pranking each other with unusual gifts, and he thinks that this one could be the best yet. Okay, the triggering has now subsided, luckily, and now I can get behind the gag. Um, in order to see his idea become a reality, the man has contacted several online service marketplaces. Um, oh, he's contacted online local service marketplace, Bark.com. He said, to cut to the chase, I'm looking for a jeweler who can put my sperm into a ring, uh, which I'm going to give to my wife for Christmas. I know this is super weird, but I'm due to have a vasectomy at the end of November and I wanted to do something funny as the la with the last few living sperm I've got. Kind of like a keepsake for my manhood. Um, the plan is to give the ring to my wife on Christmas Day. Uh, wait, to tell, uh, wait for her to tell me it's beautiful. Let her wear it for a couple of hours and then tell her what it's actually made of. <laughs> yeah, so you don't think I'm a complete nutter? My wife and I have been together for more than 20 years. Have five kids, hence the vasectomy, ha ha. And since day one have been pulling pranks on each other. I know this type of jewellery can be quite expensive, so I set aside around 1,500 quid for the ring. And I'm not really looking to spend more than that. Um, the man now claims to have been looking for a jeweller to help for over a month, but to no avail. Well, there's anyone out there. I don't know how you get in contact with him. Uh, there's no contact information. Uh, just jeweller? I don't know what's going on there. Mirror, just stuff about jewellery. Um, yeah. Why Why wouldn't they give some sort of contact information for the mad bastard? Oh, well. That's hilarious. Uh, I, I mean, I my assumption at the beginning that it was going to be some sort of, like, unbearable sort of ecosexual type loonies. But, uh, but no. Don't know. Just, just a just a run-of-the-mill everyday guy just looking to wind up his messes. And God bless him. God bless him. God bless Robin Hood. Right, what else have we got? Uh, mm, that looks pretty dry. Um, okay, more weirdness. Man has 12 centimeter flesh-eating tapeworm removed, for, removed, which had eaten his brain for 15 years. Who was it? Jeremy Corbyn. Bum! 
Wang Li, that's the, oh, it's always China, isn't it, was first treated for a malignant brain tumour as specialists tried to work out what was causing his symptoms. Man had a 12 centimetre long tapeworm, uh, flesh-eating tapeworm removed from his head, which had been slowly eating his brain for the past 15 years. Wang Li first started to feel numbness down his left side in 2007 and had continued to suffer uh, with fail health. With fail health. Fail health? It's a sort of strange millennial way of putting it. With ill health. His health was a total fail. People don't really use fail uh, in the way that they used to. I think that's probably a good thing, isn't it? Wow, fail. Um, he has seen multiple specialists and was once treated for a malignant brain tumour as doctors tried to fight the cause of his illness. Um, but the young man's condition continued to worsen and he started to suffer from frequent seizures, blackouts, according to his local media. In 2018, doctors discovered there was a tapeworm living in his brain. Bastard. They advised the patient to undergo non-surgical treatments uh, as the parasite was considered to be in a too risky area to operate on. Unfortunately, the tape won't continue to live in Mr. Wang's head, and he recently underwent an operation at the Guangdong Brain Hospital to remove it. Following the two-hour procedure, medics removed a uh, Sparganum mansoni parasite commonly found in the intestines of cats and dogs, but rarely in people. According to the reports, Dr. Gu told local media the surgery was risky. The live tapeworm was moving in his brain and we had to remove all of it, otherwise the leftover part could grow again. Oh, little bastards. Um, it's not the only case our hospital has treated four patients this year. People should be careful when cooking frogs, snails and snakes, uh, which need to be cooked thoroughly. Also, do not drink water in the wild unless it's been boiled. Mr Wang is now recovering from surgery. Well, I'd like to get an update on that. I'd like to find out whether or not he makes the full recovery because it'd be fun to know that you could potentially live with a worm in your brain for 15 years, have it removed and, and, and recover. You'd think that there would probably be some residual residual effects from from that. I don't know. But would they? Would the residual effects be worse or less than having spent about 20 years on the gear? You know, 20 years of recreational drug use. Who knows? Who knows? Customer cited for Pizza Hut order rage. Wisconsin man faces disorderly conduct rap. rap. Uh, November 4th, a Wisconsin man is facing a disorderly conduct charge after allegedly threatening Pizza Hut workers because there was not enough cheese on his extra cheese pizza. My man. Now, I'm a cheesy boy. I like my cheese. I particularly like cheese on the pizza. I cannot abide a pizza with not enough cheese on it. Particularly if... You've ordered extra cheese, as I do every time I order a pizza. So I feel my man's pain. I feel it deeply. I feel it intimately. I feel it like a dick in the ass, in a good way. And, yeah. That's the triggering just running through me. Get old triggly puff about it. Um, yeah, when you order extra mozzarella and pay... A pound, pound fifty, whatever, wherever you fucking are, whether it's Pizza Express, Frank and Manka, or whatever two-bit fucking pizza pie joint you're in, half the time, they don't put it on. They think it's, oh yeah, there they, they you go, there's a little bit extra. No, that's the same as the person whose pizza didn't have extra cheese on it. You fucking shysters. Make it again. Make it again. Yeah? Make me another one with actual extra cheese on. And in an ideal world, that one then comes out with more cheese than you thought it was physically possible to fit onto a pizza. That's how it should be. Yeah? I'm fucking around. Like, just, you know what a pizza's supposed to be like. Look, it's supposed, there's a picture of a pizza. It's a deep pan pizza. Yeah? You see, they pull a slice away. It's melted cheese. Just nicely coming away. Tearing away from it. Fucking charlatans. Call yourself pizza restaurant. Order extra mozzarella. It doesn't come with any extra mozzarella. You fucking pigs. Makes me sick. Anyway, this man's turned to violence, and I, I believe he was correct to do so. 25-year-old defendant, whose name was redacted from a report released by police, ordered a personal pan pizza with extra cheese last Monday morning from a pizza hut in the village of Weston. 
About five minutes after, the man left the restaurant with his order. His girlfriend returned, pizza in hand, and said, said it wasn't right, it didn't have enough cheese on it. Here, here. The worker ordered, offered to remake the pizza, but assured her it would be the same as the first pizza. Right, well, that's a schneid move, isn't it? Um, according to the Everest Metro Police Department report. Cops, girlfriend, uh, the girlfriend, cops noted, replied that her boyfriend wouldn't eat it. And then she walked over to the garbage can and threw it in the trash and left the building. Wow. Bold move. What a boss bitch. A few minutes later, the agitated male customer re reappeared at the pizza and began yelling, screaming and acting strange. According to a witness, the man refused an offer of a new pizza and made a comment about employees possibly spitting in his food. It's a concern. Especially when your missus has gone in there, all guns blazing, and thrown the original one in the trash. It, I, I would sort of expect there to be... I, I would be surprised if there wasn't spit in the, in the reorder. Um, I potentially asked to go into the kitchen and watch them make it. You know, just breathe down their necks. <sighs> More cheese. She'd be going. That's it. Yeah, all of that. More around the edges. Oh, come on, up to the crust. I'll pay for I'll pay more. Put put the fucking cheese on it. Put the fucking cheese on the pizza. Um, pizza Hut employee who told the police she was afraid because the man's yelling and screaming. Called nine one one. While the customer and his girlfriend uh, were gone. When officers arrived at the restaurant, Pizza Hut manager provided cops with the license plates of their uh, couple's vehicle and the phone number from which they carried out the takeaway take with. Um, the police subsequently tracked down the customer. He stated he does not believe that he should have been issued a citation because he is an American and works hard. Seems reasonable. Um, the defence of being a hard-working American... What, what? I mean, is there some stuff that that should get you out of? I don't know. Being drafted into a communist regime? No, sorry, I'm a hard-working American. I do my job. I have no interest in coming and working for a totalitarian state. Man who denied yelling and swearing at Pizza Hut workers said he pleaded on, pleaded not guilty when he appeared at the municipal court. So what is the charge? Um, it, 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 it doesn't, does it say? Charged with shouting. Charged with what, being an arsehole. Being, I mean, they should charge the Pizza Hut with serving for some sort of crime of serving pizzas with not enough cheese on. That's a disgrace. He's a hard-working American. He deserves to have cheese on his pizza. What's he going to eat a pizza with no cheese on it? It's got extra cheese. If we make it again, we have the same amount of cheese on it. Double the cheese! <sighs> Unbelievable. Unforgivable behaviour from Pizza Hut. I'm saddened and disappointed. I will say, actually, there's a Pizza Hut directly opposite this studio. Quote-unquote studio. This fucking shambles. And I went there. But two weeks ago for their lunch buffet, £7.50 buffet, um, they have pizzas, pastas, and salad bar. You can fuck your pasta and your salad bar. 0% interest from me. However, I expected there to be some semblance of quality in the pizzas that they had out. However, I was, and now thinking about it, unsurprisingly disappointed with what they had laid out for the buffet. They had only vegetarian pizzas, apart from at one point they had a Hawaiian come out with maybe three pieces of ham on it and predominantly pineapple. Now, don't fucking shoot me. I'm not against pineapple on a pizza per se. However, there has to be ham on it as well. Otherwise, what is that? It's a dessert. There has to, you, you, you have to balance the ham with the pineapple. Fuck. So most of the pizzas that they were bringing out were... Vegetarian pizzas. Yeah, they just had a few peppers on or some olives or nothing or some mushrooms. Nothing of value. Nothing of actual value because it's a buffet and therefore you get the basically the scraps from the floor from fucking shysters pizza hut. It's a disgrace. And not enough cheese. Not enough cheese. But you can't send it back when it's a buffet. Particularly when you've just schnaffled down like basically three pizzas worth of it. Like, to try and get your money's worth, seven fifty. dollars it's basically just dough with a little bit of tomato smeared on it. It's it's like a poor man's bruschetta. It's pathetic. 
I won't go there again. Is there anywhere worth going to for a pizza buffet in Brighton? You know, that where it's actually good? There used to be a place where they what their trick was was to take the pizzas once they were done and then fro- put them in a frying pan with oil on the bottom so the bu- bases were really oily, therefore being more satiating. Therefore, people would eat less. That's a schneid trick, but it's smart. It's a smart one. And it actually made, they were actually pretty delicious. But you couldn't get through more than a couple of slices. And it was about 10 quid for the buffet. Anyway, guys, a lot of triggering today. But, you know, you've got to get your money's worth, haven't you? What other bits have we got? A few nice bits. Come on. Uh, maybe have that. Let's have this uh, misanthrope bit again. It's called Turbine. It was popular. I think it would be the only other thing that's a potential contender for shoe thrower of the week. But are you slinging footwear to it and not with the same ferocity, furosity, not with the same vigour, chutzpah, not with the same spunk as magnitude? Mantis. Nice bit. Anyway, this is Turbine by, by Misanthrop. I presume it's on Neo Signal. It is. Blade Runner vibes indeed. was uh, misanthrope with what was it called turbine yeah nice bit keen on that farty blade runner vibes why not you know why not you know we've tried everything else haven't we we've had jungle you know ragga samples foghorns 
you know, um, girls singing on drum and bass records. Why not Far Farty Blade Runner? Why not? You know, sorry, sorry if that triggers you, libtards. Sorry. Um, what? There's a good bit here. I don't fully understand, but we'll get into it. Angus Mann, uh, who tried to fly drone into Perth prison, claimed Romanian circus stole his chihuahua. Now, I don't know whether or not the courier is a comedy website. They sell supplements. Okay, that's a good start. That's a good start. Um, we should sell supplements on, on, on Threshold, like InfoWars do. I do think that would be good. But we will, I'll make up some health, some, I'll just make some stuff up, you know. They, they'll just be multivitamins, just normal multivitamins that I put in a different pot. And I'll say that it, I will say that it, studies, well, there won't be studies, obviously. It'll be, you know, peace. some people say it could, it could help with everything. It could. That's what people say. Some people have said online that it helps with everything that it could help with everything and there'd be a tenner a pot you probably a subscription situation but they'd just be repackaged um super ted vitamin pills quite delicious maybe i'll grind them up maybe i'll get one of those pill presses off of alibaba that are going around they're fun they're called candy press and they actually have a picture of pingers uh, next to them I mean, you must get put on a list if you order one of those you must. Anyway, I'll get them just to repurpose the Super Ted vitamin pills into... But then they'll look like pingers. I'll have a little lobster on them. A little lob. A little wes. Put a little wes on them. Be fine. A little wes. Anyway, Angus Mann, he tried to fly drone into Perth prison, claimed Romanian circus stole his chihuahua. Cool. Um, I can't vouch for any... Well, they seem to have a lot of likes. I don't know. A drone pilot... Caught trying to fly a mobile phone into a maximum security prison has been jailed for nine months. Philip Morton was found hiding in a hedge near Perth prison and claimed he was searching for his pet chihuahua as it had been dognapped by a Romanian circus troop. OK, so that was an excuse for having the drone. Nice. I like that. Sheriff. I love that they're called sheriffs in, in Scotland. Sheriff Pino... What? What? Sheriff Pino D. Amido described um, Morton's shaggy dog story as fanciful and said it was one of the most remarkable lines of defence I've ever heard. Morton, uh, then from uh, Kirimir, now living in Portsmouth, was found guilty at a trial of uh, trying to fly a drone into a jail when Perth Sheriff Court heard how Morton was caught red-handed after driving the getaway car into a cul-de-sac and being found hiding in bushes. Well, sounds like a rough day for our man, doesn't it? The 33-year-old was heard rustling around in the undergrowth after prison officers chased the 70-mile-an-hour drone away uh, from the outer wall. 70 miles an hour? That's a fast drone. Away from the outer wall of Perth Prison. Uh, Morton was spotted putting the drone into the boot of his Audi, uh, but he drove up a dead end where the officers then blocked his escape. He clambered over a six-foot fence to try and escape and used the remote locking key to deadlock the car uh, with the active drone in the boat. Uh, Morton claimed he was near the prison in the night, in the dead of night, because he believed Romanian circus performers had stole one of his pet chihuahuas. He said, We were told the circus left the dogs outside at night. As daft as it might sound, I bought the, I bought the dog's father, Archie, to see if I could find it. Right, well, where is Archie? Morton then claimed he found in the bushes that he was found in the bushes because he had downed a litre of vodka and collapsed in the middle of the dog hunt. He said he'd been using the drone to search the riverbank for the dog. Okay. Co-accused, Cheryl Davy, 38, was cleared after the Cheryl ruled there was insufficient evidence to convict her. She was found walking several miles away from the scene sometime later. Prison officers told the trial they could see the drone still switched on in the boot of the Audi Q3 alongside Morton and Davy's dog, Archie. OK, so he did have Archie with him. Right. Scaffolder, Morton, was found guilty of trying to use a drone to fly a mobile phone into Perth Prison uh, on September. Oh, this is quite old. Um, he also admitted having a phone in the prison on May 4th, 2016. Um, well, that's a riot. 
Oh, but this is being reported in two, in a couple of days ago. Wow. Well, I hope Archie's all right. I wonder who's looking after him. Um, he's a good boy. He just wants to be loved. I know he's he makes a lot of noise and he behaves like an arsehole, but underneath it all, he's he's a good little doggo, just trying to make his way in a cruel and unusual world as the freak of nature that Chihuahua is. They used to be wolves. Can you imagine? They w came from wolves, Chihuahuas. Makes no sense. No sense. Anyway, um, I guess it's sort of the end of the show now. Um, there's probably time for... Okay, time for this. Man caught trying to smuggle MDMA tablets into festival under his foreskin. Well, it looks like he got knocked out by a dog. A man in Australia has been caught. Is that them? Or is that just generic? Wow. I wonder how much of those pingers absorbed under the foreskin. Uh, Mitzi's, Love Arts. Is that a dove? Lovely stuff. Uh, a man in Australia has been caught trying to smuggle MDMA tablets. Pills, I think you find they're, they're generally referred to. Uh, into a festival under his foreskin. Benjamin De Luca from Geelong, Victoria, was attempting to sneak one and a half of the tablets into Listen Out, Listen Out Festival in Melbourne last year when sniffer dogs picked up the scent from his crotch. Search subsequently revealed the drugs, with the police prosecutor telling Geelong Magistrates Court they were secret secreted. Secreted from his foreskin. It's a nice way of putting it. According to the Geelong advertiser, DeLuca was charged and pleaded guilty to possessing drugs. He was issued with a drug diversion notice but failed to attend the treatment program. In court, he argued he was a full-time concreter and had tried to tell the police he would not be able to attend. Magistrate Bob Coomer fined the man a thousand US dollars, but no conviction was recorded. Of course, the illicit nature of the trade means police must always be prepared to find drugs where they might not, where they might least expect them. Yeah, 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 they found a load of meth in some sriracha. Um... <sighs> Let the man take a one and a half pingers into a festival. Jesus Christ. He's gone to the lengths of putting them under his fucking foreskin. Let the man take a pinger and a half into a festival. Jesus, find a thousand dollars for dingers. Or was he fined for not turning up to... What, you, drug, you need a drug treatment program for trying to smuggle a dinger and a half into a music festival. He's an addict. Get him into rehab. He's a menace to society. Oh, he's a danger to himself and others. He put half a pinger down his job site. He's a rapist. This is insane. It's just madness. It's like sort of like Puritan behavior, isn't it? It's like the sort of like pearl clutching Mary Whitehouse kind of madness. A pinger and a half. And he was arrested for a pinger and a half. Fuck you. Jesus Christ. Ping Jay, you haven't put pings on your foreskin? Uh, twice. twice. Did you get caught? No, twice. Twice. Wow, two for two. Okay. Um, that's Jay there, morning presenter of Trickstar Radio, um, Brighton's second favourite radio station. Um, <laughs> end of the show now, guys. Okay. It's, uh, it's the end of the show. Um, the... Coming up next is Constrict with Incidental Sonics, who is incidentally now banned, from, particularly from Coffee and Memes, for crimes of communism. Um, so that's sad. Um, should I be giving a communist a platform on this station? Well, it wouldn't be the first time, um, but I'm not happy about it. If, he, if he's prepared to renounce his communist ways, which I doubt he will, uh, then maybe, maybe, you know, he can come on the show. Guys, and then after that will be Benage's Shoe Throwers compilation, collection, compendium, Boogaloo. And that will be good. And that'll take you through till two. Well, then you can have your lunch. And then it's Rankin's Records at three. Then you can go away and you can do some work for the afternoon. And then when you get home, it's time to start cooking dinner at seven. You can stick on Eastern Front. Lovely. Lovely hour of shoe throwers. And then at eight, you can watch whatever you need to watch on the telly. And then at nine, you can tune in to our boy Hugh, a.k.a. Duff, with a uh, proposed new show uh, where he plays old records um, and discusses them. 
I don't know where he got that idea from, but it sounds like a good one. Uh, so you can enjoy that. Anyway, the VIP list of Patreons is as follows. Greg Comfort, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Musson, Squidgy Beats, Body Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaziski, Matty Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bula, Troy Matt Thunderbat, Mike Pyle, Lilian Subridge, Frank Thomas Ultra, Ryder John Finners, and the BDR crew. Be a blast for Dustin Grief, Cooper, Gilly Lightfield, James Parry, Handed by Tendo, Lady Griffin, Delina, Melissa Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, Guard, No STDs, James MC, Josh Rins, Rob Havy, Shibby, Tico, Kashiva, Dan Osman, Torrin, Will Moore, Mr. Pope, Double Crest, the Sergeant, SD Superior, Drama Bass, Chris Bates, the Bills, Bruce, the Bartholson, Odin Basley, Full of D, General Jimmy Flats, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robinson, Das Asher, Connor Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, Cosmic Waffle, Meat Loaf, Nick Brock, Sean Simpson, Robin Carter, Hugh Downer, Sarah Hunt, the HMS LT, Will Ape and Vago, Dan Tweed, Libby Salazar, Big Watch, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, Carl Lewis, Gordon and Liz, Carl Williams, George, uh, Tom Skipper, it's unfortunately, it's George DC, Anthony Shock, Claudio Lushmir, Benish, Dremor, Shea, Timid, John Forsyth, Anderson, PSN, Godlike, MC Hammond, Daddy, Your Mum, Leonardo Gervais, Big Eight in Chapter 13, What a Bunch of Bad Motherfuckers, ha, ha, Honk the Johnson of Life for you lot. Uh, guys, I'll see you at three for Rankin's Records. Don't go anywhere um, because all your threshold dreams will come true if you stay listening. And do not leave. Okay, goodbye. I love you. <laughs>